Hey guys, welcome back. I got a great video for you, and this is a question that I get a lot on the website. Now, players that are getting upper in age a little bit, getting a little bit older, we get tighter and tighter as we get older. That's completely normal. And I get a question of how, you know, I know in the top speed golf system, we're supposed to get this big shoulder turn. We're supposed to get all the way to 90 or even a little bit past 90 with my shoulder turn. But what am I supposed to do as I get tighter and tighter? Maybe you're a younger player and you're not very flexible. But how are we going to get this big hip and shoulder turn? You know, give us some information. Yeah, that's great for the young guys, but give us some information that's for us older guys on, on hitting it farther. Well, I got a couple keys for you, and anybody out there, I haven't seen anybody that can't get a good full 90 degree shoulder turn with the right technique. And I'm going to kind of show you a couple things and just test these out with me. If you're in your living room right now, go ahead and grab a golf club and we'll try this out. So, first off, let's keep this left heel on the ground as we're going to the top of the backswing. The idea here is that as I rotate to the top, I want to get about 45 degrees of hip turn, and then I want to separate and get about 90 degrees of shoulder turn. So let's start out by keeping this heel on the ground, and I want you to keep most of your weight on your left foot as we're doing this. So go ahead and make your backswing, keep the heel on the ground, keep your weight on your left side, and then try to rotate back. Well, you may find I get pretty tight as I'm doing this. You see here, I didn't get quite to 90 degrees. I've got a little bit too much weight on my left side, which is inhibiting me from rotating. And I've got my left heel flat on the ground. So if you're looking at it from this direction, it looks like that. No left heel lift at all. Now, I want you to go ahead and do the same thing, but let's go ahead this time. I want you to shift a little bit of weight to your right side. Now, why that's important is when we're rotating in the golf swing, they have a lot of cool science on this that we won't get into in this particular video. It'd be a little bit too long, but I should be pushing down and out to rotate my hips in the backswing. So as I start to shift a little bit more weight to my right side, go ahead and do this. Stand up in your living room right now, put some pressure into the right foot to rotate you back, and then get those shoulders to turn a little bit more. You'll see right away, I can get a little bit more shoulder turn. Now for those of you that are a little bit tight, that's completely fine. Now, there is some instruction out there, popular instruction for those young, super flexible guys, maybe you see on the PJ Tour, that says we wanna limit our hip turn going back. And if we do that, we're not going to be able to get that good turn to the top. I want you guys to go ahead and put that weight on your right side and to get a little bit of extra hip turn, go ahead and lift that left ankle up off the ground. Jack Nicholas won a lot of major championships doing that. There's a lot of players, a lot of professional golfers that won a lot of major championships, hit the ball amazing doing that, create a lot of club head speed before it became pretty popular to keep the left heel down. So let's go ahead and lift that left heel slightly up off the ground. Doesn't have to be much, maybe an inch or so. And now let's try the same thing again. So weight's on the right. I'm going to lift my left ankle up off the ground. You're going to see my hips are turning farther now. This would be 45. If you want to go ahead and go 55, 60 degrees with hip turn, that's completely fine. For you guys that aren't quite as flexible, getting that left heel to lift a little bit, getting a little bit more shoulder turn is going to get you some more power. If you don't believe me, take a look at Bubba Watson, who's creating huge amounts of club head speed. That's exactly what he's doing. And he's still a very consistent ball striker. Uh, so let's go ahead and try that again. Put a club across your shoulders, weight shift to the right, left heel slightly comes up and you're gonna see just how much more you get. So to compare with that, let's keep weight on the left, left heel down, and you're gonna see very little shoulder turn. As I go to the weight on the right, left heel up, bigger shoulder turn. And then I'm gonna come all the way on through. Do about 20 or 30 reps of that just in your living room. Then we're gonna go ahead and take it out to the driving range, get that left heel to lift, and you're gonna start hammering the ball. Let's try it out. All right, guys, good luck out there. See y'all soon. Hey guys, hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an awesome bonus for you. We need that lag to create lots of club head speed and to hit the ball really far. That's gonna help you to lower your handicap as quick as anything. I've got a great lag video, and one of the number one lag mistakes that I see players make time after time. I'm gonna play a preview of that video. If you wanna watch that entire video, just click the link that pops up on your screen if you're on a desktop device, a computer, home computer. If you're on a phone or a tablet, click the iCard and you'll get instant access to that video. Plus, you're going to get five more bonus videos from our Top Speed Golf system. I'll see you guys in the lag video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video, we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm gonna talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also gonna give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing, 
happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only going to max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.